Okay, welcome. Uh, can you see my screen? I think so. Yes. Can indeed. All right, great. Um, my name is Brian Bouters. I'm the pulp product owner for services. And this talk is titled a year of data. Um, and it's going to talk about what we have, what we're seeing in terms of the data we've collected, some questions that we think we know the answers to and some that we don't. And uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So the analytics, this is about analytics data. Originally, it was called telemetry, but now we always refer to this as analytics data. So um, telemetry data, like you heard in the last talk from Deco, is all about systems reporting, um, specific systems reporting their specific metrics. Um, and these are kind of for the administrators of those specific systems. This is analytics data, which is um, having a whole bunch of pulp systems report anonymously their data back to one centralized place so that we can look for trends across a whole, a whole bunch of installations. Um, we started collecting data in, in production systems on September 9th was kind of the earliest one that I saw. So it's been a little bit over a year. So this is a great time to kind of look back and review. Uh, this is all hosted at analytics.pulpproject.org. You can go poke around this site uh, as well. Um, and you'll see a lot of these graphs here. I've just taken screenshots. That way we can kind of keep a, a focused look at specific graphs as we go through them. But um, this is the site that we were looking at. So I'm going to ask a series of questions that, you know, when I looked at this data, I kind of pondered to myself. And I'll tell you what I think the answers are. But this is just a look, you know, one person's interpretation of the data. So feel free to unmute and point out other things or, or um, challenge the uh, conclusions. I don't even think they're that conclusive. So um, feel free to jump in and, and have some discussion. So one of the questions is, how many pulp installations are there? And I know that there are at least a 1,000, but I really don't know how many. Um, and we're going to talk about, about why that is. So uh, Galaxy NG is a pulp plugin, which also uses pulp Ansible and pulp container. And uh, it also has a downstream that's made from it as well, which I believe they all have telemetry turned on. And so um, if you look here, uh, I think this point in the graph, like around late November, is kind of when maybe the downstream started getting installed by users, customers. And so you kind of see this like sharp rise that occurs here. This is in the container plugin, which is shipped with their uh, with their downstream. And if you look here at their Ansible plugin as well, uh, you see the same trend. I'm going to flip back and forth on these. You can see the same like little spiking. It's, it's basically the same graph, um, except for uh, the absolute numbers, which I'll talk about here in a minute. But the point is, is that um, you know, we know there are at least 1,200 installations, or at least there were on June 22nd or thereabouts. So we know that there's at least this many. Um, uh, I'm going to talk about the, the discrepancy here. We're going to come back to why this number peaks at 1,000 and this peaks at 1,200 here in a little bit. Um, but, you know, Catello and its downstream I believe don't enable analytics by default. I tried to get confirmation on this yesterday, but I just didn't get it. Somebody on this call knows, feel free to unmute and let us know, but I'm pretty sure that they don't enable analytics um, by default. Maybe it's a user choice. I'm just not sure. Um, I hear someone uh, saying something. Go ahead. Downstream doesn't. The satellite doesn't have it turned on. For sure. OK, good. Um, so. Uh, they are likely, I mean, just in what we know of Pulp's usage from other sources, I guess anecdotal, but um, I, I think it's pretty well established that they are very likely the largest consumer of Pulp by far. Um, Catello Foreman as an upstream project has a large wide usage. Every single install gets Pulp. Um, satellite as a downstream has really large usage. Um, I suspect it's much larger than um, the downstream for Galaxy NG. So, you know, like what we know is that there's at least a thousand installations, but we really just don't know how many there are. So this is kind of like circling back around to the 
my, my claim here about the pulp installs. This is really all that we know. How big is the pulp user base? We just don't know. Um, yeah, and, and maybe additionally, um, in Catello installations, every smart proxy has their own pulp installation. So that would bust the numbers even more. Yeah, that's that's a great point. So like, what uh, if you're not familiar with what these terms are, what Matthias is saying is um, when you have an installation, you might put a point of presence on various uh, network segments or isolated layer through networks. And each one of those is a pulp install as well. So like one actual deployment might have like, you know, maybe even like more than 10 uh, actual pulp installs in it. Uh, so let's move on to a different question. How many single container installs are there? And my claim is maybe 200-ish. Um, and I look at this because what I tried to do is look for some similarity in the graphs across plugins that are included and have been included in the single container plugin and are not included in other sorts of um, downstreams uh, or you know other projects like Galaxy NG or Catalo and Foreman. So for instance, the Python plugin, I'm pretty sure is only really present in the single container and it's not present in those other in those other downstreams. So, you know, if you look here, this peaks at like 180 roughly. And again, this is a stacked or I didn't say it, this is a stacked graph. And so um, if you go to the site, you can like hover over and get individual numbers, but you can even see from here, it's maybe a little bit hard to see. I'm not sure scaling is going to work too good on this site. Um, so if you load the site yourself, you'll be able to see it. But um, if you, I think my scaling broke the JavaScript. Um, if you hover over here, it's like, oh, there's 34 installations of 1.5. There's 100 installations of 1.6. There's zero at this point of 1.7. So if you add those together, they add up to like 140. And that's the total that you see reported on the left side. So this is a stacked graph, which means that you can read the left side and not worry about where the totals are coming from. You just know that it's the total. So if you look here, you can see that there's like 180 Python plugins. I'm pretty sure all these are coming from the single container. Um, and one of the other reasons for that is like, if you look at the Debian plugin, um, which I'm not sure, I mean, I know Deb is, commercialized with a downstream. I'm pretty sure that that telemetry is disabled as well. So like we don't really know how many um, Debian installs contribute to our total pulp user base. Um, but if you look at the and it's and also Debian, I don't is Debian included in Catella upstream. But again, I, I, I don't think Catella upstream definitely Debian is included. Yeah. Um, and so what that's telling me is that you know this number being just 180 means that upstream Catello is not reporting its analytics. I agree. Yeah. So so basically, like there's a bunch of installs that we just aren't aren't hearing from. Um, so the Debian here is uh, is at 180. the The Python is roughly at 180. The shape of the graph is maybe a little bit different. Um, but the totals add up to pretty similar. So I kind of think that the single container has about 180 and eh, maybe getting towards 200 installations. Um, another single plugin, uh, like what, what, how about single plugin installs? So one of the interesting things I've noticed in here is that RPM definitely has some single plugin installs and pulp file also has some single, single plugin installs. So if you look at the RPM graph, um, you know, it's at 500. And, you know, if we're pretty confident that these aren't being reported as systems with form and Catello, of which RPM is installed with each one, it's not reported in the downstreams like satellite. It's definitely not part of Galaxy and G or it's downstream or Debian and it's commercialized version. So basically these are straight upstream installs and we're not seeing other plugins in, in the single container also reported with these high numbers. And so what that tells me is that um, people are just installing RPM. Um, I'm not entirely sure how, I think maybe this is still using the old installer and they're just selecting RPM as the plugin that 
that they are to use. Um, or they would have to be, you know, if they are using a container-based technology, they would have to be um, installing with, uh, you know, like building their own image that just has RPM in it, for example. So, but um, RPM is a popular plugin and its user base continues to grow. You can see it's kind of going up and to the right. So um, there's clearly value there. And this is straight upstream usage, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, you can also see, well, we'll talk about upgrade stuff here in, in, in a little bit. Um, I also mentioned file is installed independently as its own plugin. And you can see that here. I mean, like this is peaking at 250 as a cumulative um, install count. And this is, this is uh, you know, well above the single container numbers that we kind of established earlier. If they, if this were, if these were all single container installs, then every plugin that shipped with a single container would show these numbers, and they don't. So, um, you know, if there's 200 single container installs, like well, there's at least a, an additional 50 users or 50 installations that are installed, kind of just on their own. So this is this is a, a plugin that clearly has some some distinct value, um, or maybe. Uh, it, it's hard to say why. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I mean, this. I think the case is pretty clear. Like, this is a high value plugin. This 50 additional installs. I'm not really sure what that's telling us, other than it's 50 installs. Um, so, what are our most popular plugins? It's a little bit hard to say. Um, if you if you go by the data, like the straight data, it's container, right? I mean, like look back. Look back at the original graph on container. Here's the container plugin. It it has the highest number, uh, but I don't think that's the most popular plugin. Um, pretty sure the most popular plugin in reality is probably RPM. Um, and I I I I guess I conclude that this again. These are like beliefs. These are not hard conclusions. I mean, I just don't think there's clear evidence to, to conclusively support these conclusions. But um, the reason I think RPM is our most popular plugin is because um, the upstream uh, Catello Foreman and the downstream satellite don't report any analytics data. We know there's a really large install bases. We know the RPM is their main thing. And then two, um, if you look at our you know, just straight upstream usage um, of users who went out of their way to install a particular plugin, the RPM plugin, you know, over doubles other ones. So uh, it's, in, in reality, it's probably RPM, but if you just look at the numbers, it would suggest it's container. So it's a little confusing. Um, how often do users upgrade? Not that often. Uh, I think Pulp is a tool that users get working and unless there's some real reason for them to upgrade, they just leave it alone and it just keeps operating. And that's great. Um, I'm not sure that we, I'm not sure that as a project, we need them to do that any differently. I'm not sure that's a goal we need. Um, so I would say like, if this is the case to me, this is fine. Um, but if you look at our core plugin versions, so there's a whole bunch on 321. I'm pretty sure this contributes mostly from uh, Galaxy and G's use. It's the first version where we had analytics added. And then <clears throat> we didn't release as frequently. And so there was a lot of time that went by, I believe. Yeah. And, I and the bomb 20 could be even higher. We just don't have data. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that, that's an important point that I didn't mention. Thank you. Um, you know, this only started at 321. And there's a whole bunch of installs that happened before then. And those just aren't even tracked at all. And if the idea, if the trending in the data that we do have suggests that users don't upgrade that frequently, I mean, the number of those previous installs could be really significant in fact like the most significant um relative to the data that we do have yeah i find myself asking myself 
how many pulp two installs are there still out there? <laughs> totally. I mean, it's, it, it, exactly right. Dennis, um, if you just restarted it every day, it works. <laughs> Dennis, um, Dennis, go to your room. We don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> so, um, so I mean, like, it, you know, how do we characterize these growth rates in terms of installs? Uh, slow, I guess, would be accurate. You know, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think, uh, and and the point also also was made. Like we're releasing way more frequently, so um, I mean, eventually they'll go up and to the right, and um, there it is. I think one thing that developers can take away from this graph, which is interesting, is you know where's the value in terms of backporting. Um, I think it's pretty clear that three twenty one is valuable. Um, 323 has a larger market segment than 322 in recent history. So that's interesting. It's not most, you know, oldest. It, it doesn't strictly follow this um, oldest is more widely deployed um, trend. So yeah, maybe. Brian, Brian, 323, I believe, is used by Galaxy in one of the versions. Interesting. And then um, you, you can add all the Catello and Foreman versions. They always jump, or at least the ones that end up in satellite always sort of jump versions or often jump yeah. versions. There's only specific yeah. versions that ever got packaged for Catello and Foreman, right? Yeah, it's that right. Um, and so uh, without, without um, but we, even without those insights, um, which I appreciate you all sharing, but even without those insights, just on an absolute numbers basis, this might tell you, hey, maybe we don't backport to 322. It's just not worth it. Or maybe we only backport to 321. I don't know. Um, so I've looked at the data. I like to look at this website from time to time. And I usually just look at the core, uh, this graph right here. This is the graph I look at. Um, and what I have concluded is that we get about five installs a week is what we get. Yeah. So that's a great transition to our next topic. Is the user base, base growing? And it was. Um, but actually, starting in July 23, it's relatively flat. So if we go back to this graph, and because remember, this is a, um, I had to check myself, so I'm kind of cumulative. calling it's cumulative, right? So there was a large increase from, you know, I don't know, first of the year to June. Is that what I'm saying here? To July. And then it's, it goes even a little bit down and then it stays like relatively flat. Well, and so I would say, you know, maybe it was actually flat the whole time. And maybe these, maybe there's like a large portion of data that that's like 320, which is not tracked, and 319, and 318, and 317, and these are actually just upgrade installs and not new users. So maybe I'm, I'm just uh, postulating that may, maybe it was actually flat the whole time, um, and this is actually an upgrade graph, not a not a new install graph. But but my claim is that this is maybe one of the main takeaways from this talk. And we'll go over some discussion right here. Um, I don't think that the pulp community is actually growing from an installs perspective. Interesting. Yep. I can't see who's um, got their hands up. Um, Grant, no. I thought Daniel was ahead of me, but okay. Um, and I just I made the point in chat too. Um, it's good it's good to learn what we can from these graphs but like you said at the very beginning brian there's a lot of data that we don't get because analytics is a thing that users get to decide whether they want to send to us or not and a lot of users and a lot of our downstream products not just for red hat deliberately turn it off um so as long as we keep in mind that we are reasoning from data that is incomplete, somewhere between somewhat incomplete to woefully incomplete, depending on what we think the, the, 
the reality is. Um, it's great, but you have to be really cautious because we know there's a there's a huge data set that we're just we get no numbers on. Yeah, that's that's totally fair. Um, let's go to some other folks. Uh, th thank you for sharing that, Grant. I'm going to try to respond. I'm going to wait till the end. And for the uh, June, July break there, it could also be that this started uh, a new version of Galaxy that may have telemetry off by default and uses start upgrading. And so we lose those numbers actually reporting. I haven't heard of that, but that's not impossible. <clears throat> or just uh, installations being more aware and deciding on a large scale to opt out. Yep. And um, in the end, it could be a combination of all, all of this. Yeah, totally. I think these are all excellent points. Um, I can't see. Who else uh, would like to share? I don't see any hands raised. The, uh, the product versions tab and 3.21 is for um, the last year's Ansible 2.3 that was released at Ansible Fest. And that's why we see that giant uh, climb up as more and more systems upgrade. And then 3.23 is for the next version, 2.4, which is why 3.23 is growing at a faster rate as more people start upgrading. So I expect as as time goes on and then 2.3 becomes less and less supported and Ansible starts encouraging their customers to upgrade, we'll see the inverse where 3.21 will start going down more and then 3.23 should probably rise higher. Yep. Now, as for the flattening of the curve, I don't, I don't actually know why that's occurring. And also, I'm kind of confused about why the numbers don't add up. Um, we know there's around a thousand installs for Ansible, and the curve is at around a thousand two hundred. But in the RPM graph, we're at five hundred, and so, and then from your previous slide, you said there's around two hundred just container installs. And so where is the extra 300 gone in this pulp core graph? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a great question. And I don't have the answer to that. Unless they somehow figure out a way to install pulp without pulp core. <laughs> no. Yeah, so um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. But I think you raise a very compelling question. Um, so I'm going to go through just a couple more things. Um, we're almost at the end of it. Um, but my, I, uh, one of the key takeaways from this talk is that I don't think the user base is growing and that's, uh, concerning. Um, so do, hor do users horizontally scale? Some certainly do. Uh, you can see here, it doesn't show the number here, but it's when I hovered over it in the interactive graph, it was like 1.22. Um, and this is on the mean hosts. So that's this bottom line here. So, you know, there are definitely installations that are more than one host, and that's a horizontally scaled installation. Um, so some users definitely do this. So is that a valuable part of our feature set to support that? I think definitely. Um, is an admin the same as a user? Most of the time, yes, but not always. Um, if you look at the number of users that are installed on a pulp system, uh, you will see that most of them have one, which is what you get by default. I'm not sure how these are getting zero. I'm not sure why that's a thing. Um, but there are also twos and threes and fours, and then some that have a whole bunch. These systems must be hooked up to like LDAP or something, or Active Directory or something like that. Um, but there's a there's a bunch of, or there's a non-negligible segment of the market that's like two, three, four, five through eight. These are probably hand-configured users. Um, so, I mean, if, if it's certainly three 
plus these are de these are definitely cases where the admin is not equal to the user is not the same persona as the user so this is something that we've kind of been operating under as a developer community and i think this is true you know how important is that is debatable but is it a true is that a reality i think that's a reality yes um these graphs are way easier to look if you click on the agenda part for one and zero then they get uh, faded out and then you can see the um two two more users much more pronounced oh yeah uh that's cool let's go do that uh hey look interactive graphs like this yeah that's cool so you can see here 45 10, 11 installations, 10 installations that have five through eight. So, I mean, it's definitely a reality um, that uh, the admin is not the user. That's my conclusion. I mean, these are definitely all debatable. This is an interpretation from incomplete or woefully incomplete uh, data. So that's that's one of the things I see in the data. Um, how about domain usage? I think the data suggests that domains are entirely, almost entirely unused um, and we developed this feature set because of a specific set of requirements that we had. Um, I think that, uh, you know, either domains is running multi-tenant pulp installs with isolated storage is not a widely, is not a wide need that people have, or um, this feature is not, you know, being advertised enough or things like that. I think it's, I think it's probably more of the former, but this is, it's a really important feature that's um, not important to a large, broad section of our user base. Um, but without getting too much into the why, um, the data suggests that domains are currently not not widely used. Um, but also, you know, like we don't ship a container with them on. Many of our plugins don't support them, so there's also reasons like that. Yes. Yeah, and uh, also if you intend to use domains you need less installations keep that in mind hmm. yeah um thank you matthias uh, i agree with that um we're almost at the end of the content here in our time uh custom access policies custom access policies does actually get some usage uh which is cool um i think this also falls into a portion of our feature set which is not used broadly but is probably really important for those users who do use it. Um, similarly, for custom roles, custom roles are really not used that much. Um, so, like, you know, was this feature set worth it? I, I think we, I think this kind of falls in this in the same category as domains. Like, it was unavoidable from a stakeholder's needs perspective. Um, even though it's a small number of installs that needed it, they really needed it. Like, it was a blocking must have requirements. So creating it was kind of unavoidable. So, you know, thinking of this as like a return on investment calculation is probably not a great way to think about this. Um, but for for better or for worse, um, the data suggests that uh, across a broad number of pulp installations, the custom roles feature sets just not used very much or, or at all. Um, Postgres versions, users use a lot of different versions. They use from 10 to 15. Um, we don't do anything special with databases for the most part. And so I'm not surprised that we run on a bunch of different versions. Uh, yep. Yep. Sorry to interrupt you again, but for the sure. last graph, you probably need to consider that most of the systems are single users and they are admins. They don't even use any kind of RBAC. Yeah. Again, um, it would yep. be helpful to, to gray out or to, to fade out the zero part and then see, look at the rest. And then it's, I think, kind of a bit, at least. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I mean, I think what you're saying is like, it, what's the um, users that where the admin is the only user certainly have no need for this. So, like, where's their actual choice in the matter? And you can see, I mean, like, there's a non negligible number of installs that use custom roles. So that's kind of cool. Um, I think that's a great point, Matthias. Uh, we are at our time. Um, my last point to leave you with is a hope for the future. Um, part of why we got into this business was inspired by a person named Carl Trioff from, I think, a year or two ago. 
uh, maybe two years ago at this point, um, the idea that he left me with, and I think our community with, uh, when he came here and gave a talk was to use analytics to make decisions. I don't think that we've really um, done that. Um, and my hope is that we do more of that. Uh, like, let's try to use have this data, even though it's incomplete, help um, drive decision making. So uh, one of the things I'm interested in is, is activity X increasing the number of installs? My claim is that the number of installs is not increasing. Um, that's my time and I'm in a minute over. Thanks a bunch. Uh, one suggestion is that for some of these later graphs, we should probably add some um, identifier for when it was added. So like all those last graphs about domains, custom roles, access policies, I think they're all sort of reporting in pulp core 323. Um, and we know the majority of our recurrent reported data is on 321. Yep. But a lot of these other especially the RBAC stuff has been around for longer than that. Um, so we'd have no idea the actual usage of it. That's a great point. I agree completely. Yeah, yeah, because people don't upgrade. <laughs> well, I mean, you can't use a feature you don't have. Th that's true. Yeah, yeah. But some of them were there before. Three but even they are using older versions. If it's not being reported, because yeah. it wasn't being reported until 323. Mm, mm, I see what you're saying. Even if they have the yep. feature. It would be interesting to see if we can uh, find someone in the community who's really interested in doing data analysis that could get access to the raw data and help us build some interesting, more interesting, like cross-cutting graphs to, or correlated, correlated um, graphs instead of just the raw numbers. Um, I'm not sure how possible that is. Uh, we do need to actually... I'm, I'm going to end this recording, Brian, because we need yep. to set up for, for Mike. I got it.